Well, hello once again. This is your pastor, Pastor Ralph Alderman, presiding at Sand Hill Church of God by Faith, a shining light Church of God by Faith, located in Sand Hill, Florida. And we certainly bring you greetings and belated good tidings this morning. We wish you a belated Merry Christmas. Hope uh, all is well. And I pray that we really, really enjoyed uh, the holidays and really captured the meaning of Christmas. Maybe the meaning of whose birthday it really is. And then maybe we gave the right person the, uh, the gifts that uh, they deserved. And I'm not talking about brothers and sisters. Uh, any physical uh, gifts, but uh, on the serious side, we we certainly pray and hope that you had a uh, happy Merry Christmas. And now we want to just deal with uh, what we'll, we would like to be uh, deal about this morning. We're really excited about the Word of God and maybe getting uh, prepared if the Lord would allow us to go forward in the new year with uh, anticipation, with hope that we've never even had before, uh, with foresight that we've never even uh, had before, coming out of a year of uncertainty, dealing with pandemics and um, just uh, things that life uh, has for us, uh, but we know that God is real, and we know he's still on the throne, and so we're just going to see if we can just say something uh, today that will, as I often say from time to time, encourage your mind, your soul, your heart, and your spirit. We would like to call your attention to a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come thanking you for life, health, and strength. Father, we thank you for just allowing us to see another day, a day that we've never saw before. We realize it was because of your goodness. We realize it was because of your mercy and for your grace that's renewed daily. We pray that thou will look upon each and every heart, soul, and mind this morning with the blessings, Lord. We pray that thou will stretch forth thine hand and that thou would touch us in the healing and our salvation and our deliverance, Lord. We need you, Lord. We're helpless without you. We pray that thou would look on those that are still fighting this pandemic, those that are still on the front line receiving the blunt of this horrid disease, Lord. We pray for front line workers, medical workers. We pray for our children ask that you would just richly and continuously bless. We pray for this whole world order today, Lord Jesus, and ask that you will bless to the utmost, realizing and knowing that you are God and that you're too wise to make a mistake and you're too just to ever do wrong. We pray and we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Again, God bless you. We appreciate you, and we really uh, thank you for viewing in with us this morning. We pray that we won't be long. Uh, we might pray that you will pray for us and help us to be brief, <laughs> except if the Lord would have us to go along or do something different. But we'd like to call your attention this morning from the book of St. John's like to maybe call your attention to verses of uh, scripture from St. John chapter 14. We'll be reading our verses will be coming from 14th chapter of St. John verses 16 through 21. St. John 14 and 16 through 21 and it reads as follows. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that 
he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the word cannot receive, uh, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, oh, praise his name. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandment, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of me my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself in him. From the book of St. John's chapter 14, verses 16 through 21, may the Lord ever bless the reading of his word, that it might be good and edifying to the souls of the hearers. And we're, we're just Maybe in getting on into what we were about today, uh, again, as I always say, I, I solicit your prayers for me and with me. We want to call your attention to, uh, for a subject matter, Jesus, our undercover agent. Say it one more time. Jesus, our undercover agent. And... We're going, to, we're going to deal with this and look into the scripture in, in a few moments, but uh, I would like to, to try, if possible, maybe try to introduce Jesus in a new light, uh, as a new role, uh, with a new identity, if, for lack of a better word. Which is not to say this is, you know, usually when you speak about something undercover, you know, if it's undercover, we look at it as being, um, for lack of, not, of, an, of a better word, not dismissive, but something that, you know, we don't, it's not a, a, a board, up, you know, it, it, it's not where it should be, it's not right, you know, so we, we have to uh, say it's under the cover of us. But that's not it. Uh, and I want to say that first so we can understand where I'm coming from because we know Jesus is of anything, the truth. That's all he's ever been. That's all he ever will be, the truth. He, he is, you know, he is clear. He's decisive. And, and we, the people of God, know him. I pray we know him to the best that he, he will allow us to know him at this point uh, of our walk with him. The Apostle Paul said, I want to know him. The power of the resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. I don't want you to leave anything out. I want to know the, I want to, I want to feel the, when they did the nail prints in his hand and, and in his feet. And I mean, you got to be, you got to be bad to say that. And what he was only saying, what he was saying is, is what sufferings he went through. I, I need to kind of identify with that so I can know who he was. That was, wasn't even into it. I just wanted to try to, to clear up when I said undercover. I want to look at this undercover thing. I just kind of did a little thing with my undercover to, to see if I can get us to really understand. So an uh, undercover agent... The way we w we would like to discuss it, uh, or reveal who it, who it is, is it's one when you go undercover, uh, is when one avoids he does it to avoid detection by the entity or the enemy he is observing, and especially to disguise one's own identity. 
for the purpose of collecting information, and that's the part I put to it, in, case, in, in this case, to reveal and bring to light darkness. Hold that. To reveal and bring to light darkness, which we know to be what? The devil, the enemy, who's called the prince of darkness. So when I say Jesus, our undercover agent, he is undercover for the sole purpose of revealing the enemy, which is the devil, who we know as the prince of darkness. Well, when I looked at this, and when I didn't really even want to deal with it because I didn't really under, understand it, and I'm a quarter way into where I need to be to finish it. But when I look at this, and I looked at the scripture, the first time I ever really saw this scripture like this, like this, because the people of God, uh, in times past, we've been beat down and beat up by the enemy. Simply because he was revealing, or he was working from a point of darkness. We had a disadvantage because he did his work in the dark and we couldn't see him. And even though Jesus could see him and could reveal him, but he was in a state, help me, I, I gotta just, just go for so, uh, 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 I gotta pass by a lot of stuff that I really wanna say but to save time, I got to get to where I need to be. You know, to understand that. But the enemy, his main purpose is to deceive us. So we have to have something to combat his game. For me, for lack of a better word, and we know that 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 our Lord, our our God, don't play games. But it has been clear that the enemy has already said to us that he comes to lie, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's what he came for. No less, no more. He wants us, and he wants us dead. Because he know he has lost his opportunity. Oh, praise his name. Oh, praise his name. We're about to get into the, to the scripture. But another thing I, I would like for us to try to understand with, with maybe secrecy. If you will recall, in our minds, if we, we can go back, even from the very beginning, Jesus never wanted his identity known from the very beginning. Think about that. When he came here and when he did certain things, when he healed and, and when he saved and when he, he gave the blind their sight and made the lame walk, he would always tell them, go away. Don't tell them where this came from. Why? Because he had a job to do, I think. He had a limited amount of time to do that job. And when you can work uninhibited, when you can work without interruption, then you can get the job done quicker and better and more precise. And the thing that, that I think hinders us is... Because in a sense, we're just being bombarded by this enemy. And even when I would do, as the Apostle Paul said on occasion, do right, evil is ever present with me. When I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do, this thing is just whispering in my ear, don't do that, don't do this. You know, it's trying to keep me from doing 
that I know is right for me to do, and I don't see nothing. He's the principality of the air. He's the prince of darkness. I need something to combat that. Praise his name. So, I've got to get in this, but so here's the thing. We have to be more vigilant even about what we say. Now understand me. We have been given an arsenal or an arsenal of weapons from God. So so but but this weapon I think is the most powerful of them all. Because I think it controls the other. Yes, God has given us uh, uh, faith. He's given us prayer. He's given us the Word of God, which is which is is is, is more than we need to defeat the enemy. But He knows that the enemy knows that, so He can He can He can try to uh, I guess hold it up or, or, or try to I don't know tear it down, which we know it, it He can't. But it's, it's still a process that we shouldn't have to go through with. We understand that we have been given faith. And, and, and we understand that, no, he, he cannot deal with our faith when, when we have it and we know or, or, or we're in control of it. We know that through our faith, we, we can speak things in existence that were not as though they were. That's what the word, but you got to know you, you, you've got that. He's given us prayer, and we know prayer changes things, but you got to have that. Okay, he's given us the word of God who controls who we can speak through to get these things. So we know that. But my thing is, he knows it too. But I want to deal in an area where we've got a weapon that he don't see it coming. I want to talk about a weapon that we have that can pull a darkness cocktail. Whatever he's doing, this weapon can go in and, and, and get data. And warn us, come back and let us know, no, 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 he's doing that. As, as it was, uh, sort, of, sort of like David and Jonathan when, when Saul was trying to kill David. But he, did, what he didn't know is that David had an under, oh Lord, I didn't see this. David had an undercover agent. So when Saul was say to Jonathan, we're going to get him here. But since, Saul, since, since Jonathan was David's undercover agent, uh, Jonathan would say, don't go there because daddy got a trap set there. You got to go here. And David trusts him enough to listen to that. That's, I'm getting here too quick. I'm getting here too quick. That, that's, why, that's why this weapon is more powerful than, than all of them because it pulls the enemy's coattail. Since this weapon is, we have, he's working undercover. All the enemy sees is his victim, but he don't see the undercover agent that's working beneath it or behind it. Oh, praise his name. I hope we can get this. But we need to understand, since we have an undercover agent that we can talk to, that we can share things with, then that's what we need to do. Because sometimes we put too much information in the air. I told you. I told you. The devil is the principality of the air. So whatever I put out in the air, don't you understand he's got that? What are you saying, Pastor? So when I'm, I don't know, televising my situations, when I'm televising my conditions, I know that sometimes we need to talk to somebody. It's, it's good to, to just have some time of physical specimen 
to air our, our, our grievances and um, to to just get some things off of our chest, uh, as, as we say from time to time. But listen, I don't need to tell everybody when I got a headache. I don't need to tell everybody how bad I feel. I don't need to tell everybody how bad I'm doing, how broke I am, how I just can't make it, how I think I, 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 everything's going bad. I'm trying to tell you, you're putting this stuff out in the air. The enemy can deal with this in a manner that will have you out of your mind. Okay, okay, I hope we got that. That's the first, that's the first thing. But since I have an undercover agent working for me and on my behalf, I can tell him. Because he's collecting data. And whatever I tell him that the enemy is trying to do to me, since he's working undercover, since the enemy don't know who he is or what he's doing, I can give him information that he can go and take care of the enemy on my behalf, and the enemy don't even know what happened to him. I don't know if y'all understand that. Mm -mm. Jesus is our undercover agent. He knows how to deal with the enemy better than me. Because the enemy, if I just depend and lean and trust and have all faith in Jesus. Because when he, or, or when the enemy is attacking me, get this, and then we're going to the scripture. This last point I want you to get. Because you understand, Put your faith in Jesus. When the enemy is attacking you, what he thinks he's doing is tearing you down. But what he don't know is that what he's really trying to tear down is your undercover agent. He may be seeing you, but all of a sudden, your undercover agent jumps out in front and he can't deal with him. The enemy never was able to deal with Jesus because he destroyed him. Uh, defeated him a long time ago. But he still thinks he can deal with me. But I'm so glad that now it is possible and it has been made possible that he cannot tear me down because of my undercover agent. Let's look at the scripture. And, 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 and you will see it. But I'm going to read it. So here in St. John's chapter 14, uh, I raise as Jesus talks. So he says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. See, what we got to understand is Jesus is referring to himself. As being the comforter. Now, uh, j just one example. There, there was one incident where Lazarus was sick. And Jesus, who was very good, maybe best friends with uh, Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus, that's where he used to stop on his travels for rest and recuperation, and they would take care of him, feed him, lodge him, give him comfort uh, to get back out to do what he was doing. So they, they were very close. So he got the news that Lazarus was sick and dying. But in his state, because he was wrapped up in the flesh, so it impeded his progress to do what he was then doing and get to Lazarus. I don't know if y'all understand me. So even though Lazarus died, and even though once Jesus got there, 
it was a slam dunk because he was Jesus. But what he was expressing with his disciples, and I think on a larger scale to us, and I'm closing. If I can paraphrase a little bit. He says it's time for me to leave. I think what he was saying, I gave you comfort. I protected you when I was here. I, I, I didn't let the enemy destroy you. I held him back. But now I've got to return to my father. But even in my absence, I'm closing. I will not leave you comfortless. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. He said, I won't leave you comfortless. Even though the enemy may think I'm gone. Because from what he see, I return. But I prayed to my father. And I asked my father. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrase again. Since I'm leaving, since I'm going back, I need something to keep my people or to keep your people. So he said, I pray to the Father. The Father will send you a comforter. Jesus, my undercover agent. He said, I'm going back, but I'm coming back. I'm going to my father, but my father is going to send me and place me inside you. So whatever the enemy think he's got, however the enemy think he wants to deal with you, because I'm not here, but I'm in you, still working undercover inside of you. So when the enemy try to knock you down, I'll step out of you. And he ain't hit nobody but me. And when the enemy want to kill you, I'll step out of you. And the enemy trying to kill me. And he can't kill me. Jesus is our undercover agent. Because now he's gone back. But he sent him and put him in me, and he put him in you. And now when the enemy tried to attack, Jesus is working undercover. The same Jesus that fought my battle is now inside me fighting my battles. The same Jesus that fought your battle is now inside you fighting your battle. If you are a child of the king, if you love him as he said, if you keep his commandments, he's fighting for you, inside of you. Now you got to get him inside in order for that to work. Whatever the enemy tried to do, please hold this, keep this. He can't do it because the undercover agent is inside. I'm, I'm done. If we get nothing else, get this. Jesus said, I, I have to go away. But I promise you, I won't leave your comfort this. I'll leave you somebody to fight your battle. All you got to do is let him. The enemy can do nothing, you know. We have our own undercover agent fighting our battles. No wonder the, the song just think it was maybe dotty people. No, no, no wonder. I understand. I understand now why she said the devil meant it from a bed. 
I see if a dog, if a guard near it for my good. Even, even when the old devil tried to, to extinguish me, when he was plotting and planning, God still was turning around for my good. Because I had an undercover agent inside of me, protecting me. And when the enemy thought he was harming me, he was just trying to mess with him. And that won't work. That won't work. We thank the Lord for you. Didn't say all that we really kind of wanted to say. But we pray that we've said something again that might bless, touch your heart, your mind your spirit, and your soul. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come once again thanking you, Father, for what you've allowed us to hear, what you've allowed us to understand from the archives of your word this morning. We pray that as we've heard your word, that we will accept it, those that don't know you in the pardon of their sins and have heard your word, we pray that they would give up and give in and say, I yield. Say, I want this undercover agent in me because the enemy is tearing me up. We pray that they will say, I give up. If you would just come into me, I will allow you to fight my battles. We pray that this is what those that don't know you in the part of, this, of their sins are saying. I may even be thinking right at this point in time. We pray your blessings be upon all your people this morning. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, again, God bless you. God keep you. And we pray that if it's the Lord's will, we will see you the next time. Pray that you have a good one. Be safe.